Welcome to Maritime Matters, a podcast focused on leaders in the maritime market, the people, the companies, the technologies that are making and breaking the news, helping to lead the maritime industry to a safer, more efficient, more profitable, and cleaner future. Welcome aboard. This is Greg Troutwine with Maritime Reporter TV, and we're very pleased to be joined by Philip uh, Trulliard, the commercial manager for EDR Antwerp Shipyard, to discuss this shipyard, its history, as it celebrates its 10th anniversary, as well as its promising future. Uh, So, Philip, to start us off, can you give us a brief uh, professional biography with insights on your position and responsibilities today at the shipyard? Sure, and thank you for the warm welcome, uh, Greg. So, yeah, uh, the, the, the maritime life, uh, Greg, has always been in my blood. Uh, this industry in which we all operate, the maritime industry, is so demanding from time to time that you have to be made for it. It has to be in your blood, otherwise you will quit quite, quite quickly. Even, even worse, it, when you try to get out, maritime life will draw you back in. So <laughs> I started uh, my maritime uh, professional career at the Nautical Academy here in Antwerp, uh, not so far away from the shipyard in I think it was 2004, graduated uh, master in 2008 and subsequently uh, achieved highest distinction uh, the year after in maritime management and transport management, also in an academy in Antwerp. The initial plan was actually to go sailing on board of a dredging vessel, uh, but long story short, eventually I opted for a career ashore. uh, And that started as a maritime consultant and crisis controller combined with maritime expert so we went on board uh, where a, a ship was detained arrested had a, had a collision or a casualty on board or something else and then we went on board as a maritime expert mainly for the hull machinery and p and i and other insurance sites gradually then i evolved more and more and more to that insurance part of the the world the maritime insurance part and the financial uh, side and then after a career uh, of i think it was almost 10 years in marine insurance I decided that I, I really needed to go back to the roots, to ships, to the to the to, to the the hardware, let us say. Uh, and in my opinion, what is closer than than the hardware of shipping is uh, a shipyard. So uh, I started working at EDR Antwerp Shipyard, where I have a primary role as commercial manager, uh, approximately six years ago. And I take also uh, the roles as a marketing manager, and I'm handling the legal contract and insurance side along with the GDPR of the company as well. It's a a significant portfolio of activities keeping me extremely busy, but it's good to have the knowledge in each and every sector uh, of this uh, this company. Uh, And that's quite convenient, the combination of of all these areas, and it's it's saving me time knowing which part is uh, correlating with with what. So uh, I love this industry. And again, I didn't grow up in the industry. Um, I kind of came into it, but at a very young age of 26. Uh, but I've heard that story so many times. In fact, I was just uh, transcribing um, an interview I had with a, sh- with a German ship owner, um, and he was talking about his maritime life. So we were just talking about your energetic young son. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe these roots will uh, will grow within him too. But we'll. I we'll, hope for him. We'll, from sometimes, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I hope he doesn't go into the maritime life, but eventually he will do whatever he wants to do. But yep. it's. I think it's an industry you will never stop learning and the day you stop learning you're actually looking the wrong way. Uh, Everywhere in every field, in every aspect of this industry, something is happening differently every day. Yeah, I mean, I mean, particularly today, we'll get to those questions a little bit later. But yeah, you're absolutely right. There, there, there's so many transcendent trends going on in maritime right now, whether yeah. it's fuel <laughs> transition, whether it's autonomy, whether it's digitalization, lots of stuff. So, hey, I appreciate I appreciate that introduction. So, you know, again, I'm sure many watching know um, the EDR Antwerp shipyard name. Uh, but can you give us a by the numbers look at the company? You can use the metrics of your chi- choice, but I'm just looking to get uh, or to give a size and scope to your operation. Sure, 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 sure. Um, we can easily say, Greg, that uh, EDR Antwerp Shipyard, we're the largest shipyard in Belgium, but that's actually not a real big challenge. We're the one of the largest shipyards in uh, uh, Belgium and Luxembourg area, and also the, the Netherlands, uh, and we're uh, one of the largest ship repair and conversion yards in the North European continent. Um, Number-wise, we have in total four uh, dry docks, engraved concrete dry docks, where we dock 60 vessels per year. 
uh, and we repair around 150 vessels per annum at our facility laybys. That's uh, approximately 2,500 running meter, lane meter uh, of repair birds within our facility in the port of Antwerp, Bruges. Um, we have a team of approximately uh, 700 uh, workers um, and we do around uh, 1,500 technical interventions on top of that in the port of Antwerp, Bruges. Uh, and also the vicinity thereof. Uh, so we are proud uh, um, that we achieve this position within the market and we're also very uh, proud that uh, we can name the biggest ship owners and managers amongst our clients. Uh, and certainly if you look at the numbers, uh, we, our heat ratio is quite high um, with our clients and approximately 60% of our clients return uh, with one or more vessels. Uh, so we're, we're, we're quite happy with that and it's it's Make, giving us a lot of confidence that we're, we're doing something very right in, in this industry. So, you know, I, you know, I know that EDR Antwerp Shipyard, um, it, 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 you're about to celebrate your 10th anniversary, but I also know that the roots of the shipyard go back into the 1990s. Um, can you get kind of step back a little bit, um, looking at the history, the facilities, uh, and, and overall its contribution to the maritime industry since that beginning? Yeah, uh, the... The 10 year anniversary actually comes from uh, EDR Antwerp Shipyard, previously also known as Engine Deck Repair, uh, operating and managing this entire shipyard facility for 10 years. So actually we took ownership uh, and management of this uh, shipyard facility in the port of Antwerp Rouge around 2014. And, and indeed before the roots of the company um, being Engine Deck Repair, was started early uh, in the in the 90s and, and Engine Deck Repair, this company was solely brought to life to undertake and serve technical interventions and repairs on board of ships in the port of Antwerp, but only at layby. Gradually, the company portfolio of clients expanded and also the activities uh, uh, grew. And it resulted that um, in the end, EDR became active as a subcontractor for steel and other repairs within the dry docking facilities uh, before 2014, at that time it was called Antwerp Ship Repair, um, and we were already active as a subcontractor. Uh, subsequently, uh, after Antwerp Ship Repair went belly up, um, EDR became uh, a partner, at that time still Engine Deck Repair, we became a partner in the consortium uh, called Antwerp Dry Docks, and in 2014 we took over the entire consortium and started managing the entire shipyard directly, uh, 100% uh, uh, and at that time it was quite obvious that the site which we were operating on it was significantly neglected by our predecessors. This, this site Greg you have to think it's already over 75 years old and regretfully there's a trend within the ship repair and conversion docking uh, industry certainly in Europe that the, uh, the tendency is uh, to run the shipyard up to the threat of end of life and then leave it. That's how we found it actually. Uh, so we decided uh, after the takeover that a significant investment around was required, otherwise it, it was not worth it. So we started uh, renewing the entire shipyard uh, around 2014 already. Uh, and in the meantime, tens of millions of euros were invested together with the port of Antwerp in the consortium, uh, bringing EDR Antwerp Shipyard with the aim, the goal will be 2025, to be one of the most performing ESG uh, uh, shipyards within the European area. Earlier in 2020, um, we were going on the market to our clients, we were uh, advertising edge and deck repair as a shipyard, and many of our clients said, okay, listen, engine deck repair, we did not know it was a shipyard, uh, and where are you located? So after hearing maybe 100 times these correct remarks, we said, okay, it's, it's a, a, a correct full rebranding of the company is well overdue. So mid-corona, we could not even select it better. Mid-corona 2020, um, we decided to rebrand the entire company to EDR Antwerp Shipyard, uh, as of today. Um, but as of today, still EDR Antwerp Shipyard is the commercial entity name for Engine Deck Repair NV. So it was not really rocket science, but uh, the name really got stuck in the market. And we see that uh, also the, the market pool is, is, is gradually growing worldwide. So that's, it, it's a, a successful rebranding, let us say. 
Um, you know, Philip, I've been, like I said, I've been, I've been traveling the world for 30 years and I love, I love going into shipyards. Shipyards are, are, are where it happens from, from my standpoint. Um, and I know that any shipyard, uh, is nothing but continual investment, investment in, in product and equipment in people. So, you know, when you look at the shipyard that you have today, can you discuss what you would call or what I would call the crown jewels? And by this mean, I mean, the, the experience, um, the equipment, uh, that differentiates ED, EDR Antwerp shipyard from other yards. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's quite hard to select one because, um, if we look at the harbor and facilities, uh, we cannot ignore the amount of work and funds and efforts invested in our premises. Um, like I said, the entire shipyard infrastructure is renewed uh, and currently being renewed, uh, ending 2025, including a new uh, maritime logistical center. I think it's roughly around 21,000 square meters. Our workshops, over 18,000 uh, square meters, have been completely renovated and new workshops have been built. The four dry docks are under renovation or are renovated and we just, one of our crown jewels got returned back to our ownership. Uh, dock number five is our second largest dock. Uh, we reactivated uh, the entire uh, dry dock. Uh, we renewed the concrete. Um, the rail mounted cranes uh, were being uh, refurbished and renewed after I think 25 years of standstill. The existing 100 ton crane has been completely refurbished. Um, so that's actually very much one of the, the hardware uh, uh, crown jewels, let us say, of, of the shipyard, the entire renewal of the facilities. And certainly the, the real big, literally shiny piece is our new office facilities. Uh, we just moved in October 2023 uh, and everything cons was constructed to the highest environmental standards. So by execution, like I said, we are becoming the leading ESG performing shipyard for ship repair and conversion in the heart of Europe. However, putting these facilities aside, really the secret sauce, and, and I, I don't think that will be a lot different than other uh, shipyards, but it's quite remarkable that the success of EDR and the shipyard is surely the teams working for EDR. Not only the, the FTE, but also the dedicated subcontractors working like family. Actually, a lot of people have their family in the company going the extra mile to exceed expectations for our clients. It's, for me, this is unique in my life. Um, and, and also we pair that with a very strong stakeholder management in order to increase the, the engagement of people throughout the company. So that's the, the soft side, let us say. On top of that, where we differentiate ourselves is we are very communicative and transparent. Greg, we, we shouldn't hide the fact that docking in Europe is and will be always more expensive than docking somewhere else in Turkey or Asian shipyards. This is, this is logic. It's a result of various social, environmental and quality factors. Hence, uh, if an owner decides to dock with EDR, uh, it has to be on time and in budget. This is elemental. We have a catchphrase, uh, which we even have launchers for that. It's relax your docking with EDR, but it's quite accurate. If the project comes very well prepared, we will offer a smooth execution on time and in budget. And that is triggering clients coming back to our shipyards in the port of Antwerp. They know uh, that it will be more expensive than another shipyard in another area of the world. This is normal, but within the competition field in Europe, we are creating a lot of transparency within the quotations and project ex execution. And, and that's really, we see that that's one of the triggering points um, because uh, ship owners, ship managers, um, they come well prepared. They know exactly what to expect. Uh, and if they come well prepared, the budget they receive from us for the repairs should almost be the same than the bill we're footing them at the end of the, the project. We understood it's not always the case, so we're we're very happy to to very much uh, proceed with this strategy as well. Truly appreciate that backdrop, and I, I think you're I think you're on to something for sure because you know transparency and maritime don't always go hand in hand. So no, we have no. <laughs> that, that, that's another have story for even, another even day. Even there, it's it's we are being being caught up by by some clients who are asking. Uh, in our opinion, very, very straightforward 
questions regarding an unexpected work. Dry docking is like, you see the tip of the iceberg when she's dry a ship, there's always more work to go. But we will provide the standard grades exactly so the client can actually calculate almost himself what will be the outturn of an unexpected uh, event. But still they keep on asking us, uh, what is this, what is this, how much is this? And in the beginning we were somewhat surprised that we got stressed so much on what's the cost whilst we're saying, okay, listen, you can calculate also yourself. Not that we don't want to, but it's very clear. And then we heard stories indeed of, of how other um, activities in the maritime industry are not really that transparent. Uh, and that's really resulting in all these additional questions we get from clients. But we're, we're happy to, to reply, of course. Anyway, I appreciate that. Now, Philip, I understand, you know, your job, your job is to get jobs in and out. And I always hate to ask people to pick their favorite. I'm not asking you to pick your favorite job, but can you discuss one specific recent job or ongoing job that you really think highlights the capabilities of the shipyard in, in, in total? Uh, yeah, you're true. It's quite difficult to, to select just one, uh, Greg. Um, but uh, top of top of my head, let us say, I think one of the most recent uh, developments and, and, and project executions uh, I witnessed myself also in the dock is the fact that together with the paint maker PPG, we we discussed and reviewed the possibility of electrostatic painting in the in the dock. So we will we will positively charge paint and negatively uh, charge the vessel, and then we will apply errors. Uh, spray paint on, on, the, on the vessel. Um, we have tested that throughout together with the paint maker um, from a point of view, okay, let's try and test and see what the result is. Uh, we tested many other things like these robot crawlers, vacuum uh, robots on, on the ship. It's not really that helpful, a drone application on board of a, a ship in a dry dock. It's not really that helpful, but we keep on trying. And with that mentality, we executed this, e is, uh, this uh, electrostatic uh, painting uh, project. With the result, the first numbers are now in. We are saving 40%, 40% of paint uh, throughout the paint application. So we uh, saw hardly any overspray anymore. Um, to the surprise of both us and the paint maker that it was that extensive, let us say. Um, and this now is resulting, we put it also quickly on the market, uh, showing, okay, we're here also to, to redevelop. Uh, you're, you're earlier you commented that uh, change in shipping is not always that fast. And uh, sh shipping is an extremely inert business. Shipyard is uh, even more than inert. It, we're changing slowly, ever so slowly, because we, are, we have been doing this job already like this for the past 70, 80 years. So change also in the shipyard sometimes comes a little bit with their heels in the ground. But we, we now tested this with, with a lot of um, uh, positive feedback, both from owners, environment, the shipyard as well. Uh, and we see a lot of clients now asking for this application. And that's, that's also showing it's, it's not a deep dive technical bulbous bow removal or ballast water treatment installation, scrubber installation, which is all, all, all very much possible. But this really illustrates, okay, there's something new, let's try, let's, uh, let's discuss this. Again, open communication and transparency together with the client, together with the paint maker. Let's see how this pans out and it really panned out. Um, and we see now multiple clients really asking for more information because it has a direct impact also on the ESG for the, for the vessels as well. Less paint, less, less solvents. It's, it's, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody, including the environment. So that's really one of the in my opinion, the most recent eye-catching pro projects we, we are executing in the, in the yard. And uh, fair to say, we are now executing as a result from that study and that testing, let's say, we're executing another project in dock, even on the top sites as well. That's awesome. No, I mean, for 740%, that, that speaks for itself. Any, yeah, it's, you know, it's, any, it's a lot. Any, any ship owner watching this, no, if what you say is forty percent, I'm sure, uh, or hopefully, you'll be having the phone ring off the hook. So, <laughs> Philip, I, 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 I truly appreciate your time. I really just had one more question, and, and you know, we referenced it uh, kind of at the outset. You know, this is this is a transcendent time in maritime. Uh, you know, you're, you're talking about um, decarbonization, you're talking about digitalization, you're talking about ESG, you're talking about all these environmental issues, you're talking about autonomy in some respects. Um, you know, 
this is something that I know in our conversation with ship owners, you know, they're, they're digesting this and figuring out how their fleets are going to look, walk and talk in the future. But my question to you is how does this impact your shipyard? Because now you have to have new capabilities. You have to keep up with these trends, but can you kind of discuss how all of these transcendent trends going on right now are materially impacting or will impact your shipyard? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, it, it really is impacting, uh, Greg. Um, now that we, we are almost finishing our shipyard innovations, uh, they're as good as complete. Um, as an example, we all know that LNG is, is one of the parts of the future. So that's why we also are, are applying for GDT approval for tank, tank welding. We're already working on, on gas vessels. Uh, but we really want to offer a one-stop shop for these LNG fueled and, and LNG carriers. Um, we see that also an, a full LNG fueled ship in a dry dock comes also with complications, considering the boil off, considering the, the, the boil off management. That's why all our teams and on all levels, not only the, 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 the project managers or, or the foreman, but all teams on all levels are obliged to follow an LNG training course tailor-made for shipyards. Um, and, and that is really creating awareness on, on what to, to, uh, to do when an LNG vessel is coming to the, to the shipyard. Um, still, we see that, that uh, these people, which we are training on a, on a monthly basis, the war for talent is real and talent acquisition and retention is, is real. Um, for an example, we work with uh, 21 different nationalities at, at our yard. Uh, just in order to make, make sure that uh, this, this talent uh, retention actually is and, and stays with EDR. Um, further, with the, the, the renovation of the shipyard, by execution, a little by choice, but also by execution, we are becoming uh, a quite high-performing ESG uh, shipyard. Uh, and, and we now are focusing and questioning ourselves, and sometimes vocally loudly, uh, why vessels are being designed and built green, EEDI, uh, operate optimally with EXI, CI, let us say, and scrapped even being, uh, being scrapped green, which is very good. Nobody is really talking about maintaining, converting, retrofitting all these, what you said, all these new uh, applications, fuels, alternative energy sources. Why are they not actually implementing this in a green shipyard, performing well on ESG. That's for us quite striking. Uh, applying a maritime, uh, maritime sails or alternative fuel retrofitting, uh, blasting a ship for ultra smooth paint uh, applications, bulbs, bow retrofitting, uh, various things in locations where social safety, health and environmental governance is not as important as it should be goes, in our opinion, against all logic. So we are we are actually uh, a one step behind industry where the maritime industry technical side they will decide which way they will go depending on fuel uh, energy transition uh, and other and other parts we are executing this after uh, we get the knowledge so we also have to get ourselves educated in all these new new items um, and yes these new technologies will be the basis for more green shipping uh, environment um, but we discuss always with, with owners, makers, specialists what they want to execute and we want to execute that or apply that in the most correct uh, and performant way, both social and environmental. Um, and, and that's why we're, we're also uh, visiting and it's quite important to keep on visiting various maritime exhibitions and being represented for maritime exhibitions. For instance, we're now preparing for SMM in Hamburg in 2024, um, because also we are trying to, to get a lot of our uh, team members on these exhibitions to go out to new makers, to existing makers, see what the, the current evolution is going. And, and it's, it's extremely uh, uh, welcome to see that um, in some of these exhibition areas, um, you go completely in the back of the hall, uh, where there are very small startup companies uh, and you, you walk around there and, and most of the time you, you really don't have a lot of time to really go into depth and you see some, okay, that's an interesting idea or, or uh, ah, that, that might be interesting to follow up. Two or three years later, you see these very small startup entities at the back of the hall, already in the middle of the hall, having more details, more uh, projects that they can show. 
and, and recently we went to uh, Posidonia in Athens, these small starting in the back startup companies, they now have huge boots at the beginning showing what they can do for water treatment, uh, CO2 capturing, um, alternative fuel, hydrogen, as you said. It's really nice to see this evol involvement. Uh, and as a shipyard, it, you, have to be, you have to have these changes on your radar. You have to be aware of this. The only difference is from a repair and conversion yard, uh, yes, we, we will provide turnkey solutions for sure, but we will not tell our, our owner, our client, our manager, we will not tell our clients, this is the way to go, because there's so much out there and not everything is really uh, suitable for every vessel. So it's up to them to figure out what they want to do. Um, and yeah, we will execute. But in all fairness, uh, maybe ending as, uh, with a joke, uh, Greg, we always tell our clients every year we send a huge box of wine and chocolates and beers because Belgium is famous for their, their beer and chocolates. We send a huge box to IMO uh, with the hope they keep on inventing something new, which benefits also the, the environment and safety at sea for sure. But for a lot of these projects, the ships have to go dry. So, yeah, we're very happy with the evolutions which, are, which is going on, which brings us in a very bullish market right now uh, for, for shipyards. Uh, but we're, we're quite happy with this evolution because it, it's the right way forward. It's the only way forward. Awesome. Well, I was just uh, actually I was just in London in mid March this year, and I had my first sit down with the new Secretary General of the IMO. So, if that's any indication, I can assure you that the rules are going to keep coming on down. So keep 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 sending those boxes of uh, will. wine, chocolate, and beer, <laughs> which is maybe not a... really music to the ears of the, of the ship owners, but nah, it's <laughs> nah. That's, that's the way of the world, though. So, Philip, I, I truly appreciate your time. Uh, I'm sorry I missed you in Posidonia. I, I was there. I was there. I was there for three full days. I've never sweated through suits so quickly yeah. <laughs> in, the Greek, yeah. in, the, in the Greek sun. Uh, but I will absolutely make a point to see you at SMM. I've been going to SMM since 1992. And okay. now yeah. at, at, the, at this point, at this point in my life, when I tell people that they generally tell me that they weren't born then, but that's OK, too. But uh, no, <laughs> so we'll definitely be there for sure. I'll be running around. And it, like you said, the, the, the Philip, truly, truly, I appreciate your time. And I and I look forward to working with you and hearing about the more about the shipyard and the projects that you're conducting in the future. Super. Thank you also for your time, Greg. Thank you for listening to Maritime Matters. If you would like to be featured on a future Maritime Matters podcast, visit www.marinelink.com or email maritimematters at marinelink.com.